God bless you in Jesus' name. Yesterday we were on a scripture in the book of Genesis chapter 2. Quite an interesting scripture. And we are going to look upon it again. Genesis chapter 6, I beg your pardon. Genesis chapter 6, we we'll look upon it. Now, those of us that are online, I would like to administer a questionnaire quickly to our online participants, and I'd like you to respond so that we can use your response in this meeting. If there is anybody listening to me online right now, and you have suffered under the hand of a spirit spouse, I'd like you to take your phone and record a voice note that most aptly represents the experiences that you have had under the influence of that spirit. The symptoms that you have noticed because of that spirit that has tormented your life. Just a brief voice note, and then we'll use your voice note as part of this lecture before we consolidate on the prayers that we have prayed yesterday. So today is the deliverance service. That's what it's about. And the aspect of deliverance that we want to ensure that the Lord will do, the Lord will effect, the Lord will bring to pass in your life is very specific. Just in case you have been laboring under the influence of a spirit spouse, today marks the end of that experience in the name of Jesus Christ. So those of you online, you may wish to oblige me by just doing a few seconds voice notes that you notice. Since you notice this, these are the symptoms that you have found around your life. And then we'll use one or two um, responses to add muscle to the presentation. Most times when all we do is teach from the scriptures, a lot of people do not understand that the issues we are dealing with is life applicable. There's a lot of contention in the body of Christ whether or not there is anything like a spirit spouse. And um, it is customary for most ministers of the gospel to deny that it doesn't exist. So we create an atmosphere of denial in our fellowship life. And people come and pretend that some challenges are not there. And after church they go back and they are the demons that are tormenting them are still prevalent around their life. Where is Pastor Philip B., the online pastor? Come and educate us about how the voice notes are going to be sent so that we'll know how to get the feedback. Where is Pastor Philip B.? Amen. Come, can you come and talk to us as a congregation? This pastor B. Yes, yeah, so okay. Ensure that that microphone is working. So, in order for it to be impossible for anyone whatsoever to claim that the issue of the spirit spouse falls in the category of myths and legends. We will need to get um, the experiences of our brethren online. And that's why we don't want a video, we just want an audio. So that we will not see your face, but we will hear your voice. And that will be evidence enough. And then we will use the feedback that you will give us as a means of unveiling the quagmire of uh, this situation. So, 
over to Philip. He will tell us the, um, how you can get your notes across. Hallelujah. It's, it's actually a very simple, easy system. I didn't want to make it complicated, so what we're using is Telegram. Because Telegram has the ability to support as much uh, audio space as possible. So all you need to do is use our official, uh, our official line, go to Telegram, and send us an audio message. Can you please say out the official line to everyone online so that we will not be in doubt as to whether they know the line of which you speak? Yes. The official line is plus two three four. Plus two three four. Eight zero eight zero six zero six zero five zero five zero eight 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 eight. eight, eight. One more time. Plus two three four Plus two three four eight zero eight zero six zero six zero five zero five zero eight 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 eight. So you have it there, and on the platform you are using to um, stream the number just for the purpose of emphasis will be placed on the dialog box so that you can see it. Then you can interact with that number. Send it, your voice note to Telegram. Give us an executive summary of your experience that you can trace to the presence of a spirit spouse. We will use your voice note as part of this meeting to consolidate uh, our explanations because these are real-time, real-life situations. And then we'll go into the deliverance aspect of the service proper. God bless you, Pastor Philip B. Now, while we wait for your notes, because we cannot take more than ten notes, I want to tell you about spirits. I want to educate you about spirits. First thing you need to know about spirits is that spirits are jealous beings. They are jealous beings. They're, they are possessive entities. Highly possessive beings. It's because the reason why they are jealous and they are possessive is because the only platform through which that can be known in terms of expression is through the host that they influence. Now, let me do a reading. I asked you to open to the book of um, Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. What's the next verse? Instantly you will see a reaction from the Spirit of God. And the Lord said, My spirit will not always strive with man, for he is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. You will notice that the Holy Ghost backed out when that corruption or that defilement took place. The reason why the Holy Ghost backed out was because the possibility of him being expressed through those people did not exist as long as they were in partnership with that illegal union. Spirits are jealous because it is through human vessels that they can find expression. And so a spirit desires that you be exclusively available to him and him alone. At any point in time where you become a spiritual harlot, and by spiritual harlot I mean you are making obeisance and giving allegiance to more than one spirit. You come to church and you say you are worshipping Jehovah. You end up at home, you are also raising a hand to Ogugu. Because it's left hand that they raise to Ogugu. Not right. What you are going to experience is that Jehovah is going to leave you. Because Jehovah cannot contest with you. And that's why 
Holiness is a critical factor. In holiness, what you are saying is that, Lord, I am separated unto you. No other spirit will use my mind. No other spirit will climb over my heart. No other spirit will use my body. Just you. That's what holiness is about. You are exclusively available to be manipulated by the Holy Spirit. The hopes that the Holy Spirit has in terms of expression is tied to your commitment to be separated unto Him. So the issue of separation unto God is a critical issue because it is that separation and that alignment with God that gives Him the opportunity to use your life as a theater to express Himself in full extent. So if there is by any means a contender with him around your life. It is going to restrict his level of expression through your vessel. Second thing I want to say about spirit. First one is what? Two, spirits want to express their personalities through human vessels. Spirits want to express their personalities through human vessels. The reason why demons like possessing people, even though they can possess, they can enter into trees, they can possess cats, dogs, they can possess birds. But you see, when they possess these creatures, uh, these creatures do not afford them adequate opportunity for expression. They want to possess people because in people, they have so much expression. If you, there is this vehicle that used to reign in this city those days, in the 70s. Um, it's a product of Volkswagen, Volkswagen Beetle. I don't know if any of our mommies here ever, okay, you were cruising in, <laughs> in glory. <laughs> Volkswagen Beetle is, uh, it was a luxury vehicle those days. And the inn people in town were the people cruising in Volkswagen Beetle. Volkswagen Beetle has a challenge with the gear. The gear normally gives what we call a revolt sound, a rejection sound when you're trying to engage. It will say, Kah! So when you are driving box so you will not know that you are building muscles on your right hand because you, you and the gear will be in constant conflict. The car has its own will. It can resist you. So your expression is hindered in box watching between. But when you have a Mercedes-Benz GLE, <laughs> the car can translate your intentions. In fact, sometimes he can even hop higher than your intention. He, he has this, it's, it's all about expression. You will need a computer. You will need to download documents from, a, from the internet to know how to operate it. In some of the seats, there, there, there's um, a massage, massage facility. So you just switch it on like that, and then the back is helped. His expression. So demons like to possess human vessels because in human vessels it's like the Mercedes Benz. It has so many compartments and possibilities of expression. You are not with me. Are you with me? Now let me give you an idea of how vast the island of a human vessel is. And uh, spirits want to express their personalities through that vessel. Uh, Pastor Philip B., if you have up to seven notes, what you do is just, uh, you give me a sign, okay? But before you give me a sign, listen to the seven notes and confirm that it is relevant to my lecture. Because somebody might just come there and then start telling you the story of Biafra War, how his grandfather was in then it's a challenge. <laughs> it will be a... Our pastor, 
You are welcome. Long time. Hallelujah. All right, let's do a scripture quickly. Can we move to Mark chapter 5? Mark chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. That's a demoniac, someone under the influence of demons. Demons speaking through his vocal cord, and demons were praying to Jesus. I don't have time. It's quite complex here. That scripture is quite complex. And they were desiring Jesus a favor. Quite complex there. But for he had said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. So when Jesus saw the man, the first thing that Jesus said was, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And then what happened? was that the Spirit began to beg him. We are joy. Do not torment us. That's the first thing. And do not cast us out of the land, of the territory. Because demons are territorial. If you cast out that demon from the territory, the demon will be incapacitated, unlicensed, in another territory. The demon will be on the reserve bench because there is no covenant that will facilitate the activity of the demon except the demon is borrowed. Another demon that has territory can come and borrow his services and he will be operating as a tertiary influence within that ecosystem. And that's why when we go for crusades and if you're an evangelist and you're on the field, you must take note that there is somebody that came for that crusade who doesn't want to be saved. That person is a container. It's what we call a chali. And when you are casting out devils from the pulpit, the chali will be catching them and allowing them to possess him so that the demons will not leave the territory. You know, I, 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 I told you on Monday that we'll be preaching from experience on the field. It's, that's more, it's, it's deeper than just having a theological, a, a, a graduate from seminary. Just like when a doctor finishes MBBS from the university and he doesn't have practical, he knows that something is called lungs, lungs, alveoli. But he doesn't understand the, <laughs> the workings of that lung in, in practicality and how to operate on it. So you need to go for housemanship to learn practicals, how to apply that knowledge. So what I'm talking about here, where I'm drawing this thing from, is from the point of application, point of field experience. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Next verse. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion. Because we are many. My name is Legion. Why? Because we are many. 
Now, first of all, I need to establish something quickly. Uh, there is a concept I need to bring to our notice. And first among the concepts is the concept of the demonic gang. There's something we call a demonic gang. When demons take possession of someone, they come in a company. And the actual demon that secured the ground of that man's soul is in charge of the company that comes. In fact, he's the one that goes to look for other demons that can help him in the enterprise of securing that, ter that territory. So when you begin to confront the spirit that is in the man, the one that will be speaking back to you is the head of the demonic gang. That's the one that has the voice of the demonic company that is trying to establish dominion over the soul of a man. My name, personal, my, singular, name is Legion. Because we, my and we, we are men. It will interest you to know that the word legion is a Roman military term that uh, actually refers to a garrison of soldiers ranging from 2,000 to 12,000 soldiers. That means nothing less than 2,000 demons were in one man. That is to show you how vast the island of a man's territory are. His islands are many. 2,000 evil spirits found a very comfortable abode within the chambers available in the man's territory. My name is Legion because we are men. So what the devil did, and if you notice the options that were available to this man in terms of a place of rest, the demons chose a graveyard for him. In terms of a bed, instead of an orthopedic bed that helps with keeping your bones in alignment, the demons chose a tomb for him. Hallelujah. I would like you to take note of the preferences here because the alternatives are actually many. But the constraining factors that were in him was what was responsible for his final choice. What the demons did is that they took over the man's personality. They spoke instead of the man speaking. They chose the graveyard instead of a cozy house. Maybe he's a son of a rich man. That doesn't matter anymore. Because the will of the spirits are the driving factors responsible for the man's orientation. Demons want to take over your personality. And so when you have a situation where there is a spirit wife, what the spirit wife wants because you are going to come into conflict when you want to choose things that are not the choices of the spirit. The spirit will attack you. Because the spirit wants to compel you to provide room for her personality, for his personality to be revealed through your vessel. And they do that by conquering you within and making your will of non-effect. Are you with me? So that that personality just becomes a prism that is available to showcase the spirit entity that is at work within the vessel. Spirits, they do what? Huh? What? It is only in when they are doing karatu that they respond like this. Let's let's try again. <laughs> it's in karatu that they. I will where are you? May the Lord give you understanding. Spirits want to express their personality. Meanwhile, this number two I gave you, while I went to take my bath, the Holy Ghost began to teach me. You know, I told you my bathroom is a sacred place. It's a strange quarter. Once I move in there. Education begins. So the Holy Spirit taught me this one now, just now. 
He said, are you not aware? Oh, the Holy Ghost. If you are a Bible teacher, you need a teacher. And you need a teacher. You need to be connected to a real-time teacher that will bring lessons to you on the dining table, bring lessons to you in the bathroom, bring lessons to you in Moloe. In Moloe, you can bring, bring lessons to you. The spirits want to take over your personality so that they will now be the ones that are manifesting as your personality. These are the symptoms I found. These are real-time symptoms from victims of a spirit spouse. Pastor B, are you, are you ready for me now? Three so far. All right. So, one of the people that was afflicted by this spirit husband, The spirit husband, I'm trying to paraphrase it so that you will not guess who is involved. The spirit husband has a way of communicating with the victim. And part of the instructions that was made available was that the person should pack and leave her husband's house. Pack and leave the husband's house. She actually tried to do it, but she didn't have the lever to pull it through. And because of the inability to pull it through, the spirit spouse became vexed, so vexed that it struck the lady with sickness. So this one that is under the influence of a spirit spouse can actually be made sick. Physically sick. I, I told you that sickness is a spiritual thing that is manifested where? In your physical body. And so, this spouse, spirit entity, could actually afflict its victim with sickness just because the victim refused to subscribe to its recommendation. When the spirit begins to recommend, what it is actually trying to achieve is to express its personality. And the only possibility for that to become a reality is that the person needs to submit his own personal will under the influence of the will of the spirit. So the personality of the spirit will now be manifest. I found out in marriage... A spirit can come into your home that will make you no longer like a husband. If there are sincere married people in this hall, they can testify. Although, I don't want to go there. That thing, that thing, you just, not, your wife didn't do anything. You are not just feeling connection with her again. These spirits I'm talking about, they are trying to find a place within your soul. Because spirit spouses can manipulate your emotions. They can make you feel lonely. If you are operating from the realm of the soul, you are a victim to these powers. It can make you feel lonely, make you feel sad, make you feel depressed. They can transfer their, their, their own feelings to your soul, like a Bluetooth connection. And make you feel sad without reason. Make you hate your wife. You just see your wife like this. And you know that there is no iota of connection, no affection whatsoever. Although you will not say it, it it's a spirit that is manipulating your emotions. So they can operate your thoughts, they can operate your emotion, they can operate, even give you choices to take, but you need to surrender to it before it will find expression. I have stayed in marriage long enough to tell you this fact, that most, 90% of the crisis in marriage is spiritual. Demons do it. Demons manipulate people's emotions. And if you are not spiritually minded and mature, you will think it's a woman. You will not know it's you. You are under attack. You don't know. Your emotions are exposed and they are using your emotions and you don't know. You can be coming like that and then 
Maybe your wife will make a strange statement. It will hit you on the soul. It's not hard. I smoke that thing. The reason why there's so much venom in that utterance is because it has spirit backing. A spirit prompted her to make the utterance. You are not very wise if you respond to her based on that utterance. Just sing one song. Now my papa, oh. And walk away. <laughs> now my papa, oh. For you to be a very good Christian, you need to know how to sing. Singing is, can be deliverance for us. Now my papa, oh. Now my papa, oh. what you are saying to the spirit that is trying to manipulate the game is that you can't control me. I know what is happening. Now my papa, oh. I know what you can't know. You, somebody will just come, put the hand on there, say, eh. Now my papa, oh. Now my papa, oh, is not the person is not responsible. There's a spirit at war. When you shame the spirit like that, the spirit will angrily leave the space and then the love will come back. Forget about that episode. It was not hard as poor. When there is a serious prompting in your heart to say something, and you know if you say it, it will damage her, her alignment. Walk away. Just walk away. Just take one. You know how to whistle. <laughs> Just whistle and throw. They think we're not born for long to burn off. A spirit wants to manipulate you. But if you know the drama, if you know the drama, you can break the circuit. It doesn't matter how the person loved you during courtship. Say your hair is like a fountain. My <laughs> Sakome. When spirits come, demons will bring the wars out of every situation. And if you are not, if you don't get, if you don't gain mastery of these things, they will use you as a puppet. And do you know those days? Those days, in, we had one program called Sesame Street. Some puppets they would connect them with rope, and people will be. You will see, bet, bet would do like this. Is they are using rope? That's what the spirit wants to use you for. A puppet, just slap now, slap now. Then you, you carry your hand. You don't. In order for you to have a good home, you must learn how to rebel against the devil. That time when you hate your wife so much, tell her that all the women in this whole world. I chose you deliberately, and I, it's not a mistake. I saw Ungozi, I chose you. I saw this person, I chose you. Break, break the heart of that spirit that you cannot have any form of expression here. I know the reasons for this illegal union is to secure a willing host that will be ready to manifest the will, the personality of that spirit. I've seen people. Okay, somebody is asking a question. They say, okay, what is the source of how do people now contact or contract this kind of spirit marriage in the first place? Now, I'll give you two reasons, two ways before I continue telling you the symptoms that are bound, that is suggestive of the fact that there is a spirit spouse in the room. You are still with me, say amen. amen. One of the ways by which this um, spirit marriage is contracted is by demonic dedications. Demonic dedications. Maybe you were dedicated when you were born, you were dedicated to a deity. Before you arrive at the time of accountability, you were dedicated to a deity. And normally what is done is that uh, in order to keep people in perpetual bondages, the people that work for the dominion of that deity's presence within the locality will ensure that such people that are dedicated to them are 
covenanted. One of the most functional covenants that is very powerful is a covenant that has to do with intercourse, whether spiritual or physical. Hallelujah. So in order to retain that individual that has been dedicated under the influence of that altar, that deity, some form of illegal unions are contracted to keep the person in perpetual bondage. So in my practice of ministry and experience in the field of evangelism and the ministry of deliverance, I've found people that are victims of this issue that are linked to demonic dedications. The second means of, so the person may not be immoral herself or himself, but he just finds himself in this mix. It is not a function of the person's challenge, as it were, but it's a function of the fact that the people that uh, that individual uh, was held under their authority made decisions for that individual before the individual reached the time of accountability. And that's why we may not be able to effect deliverance on the life of an individual that has not reached the age of accountability. Because in the age of accountability, it is, it is demanded that each individual would determine the course of the destiny of his or her soul. The man that Jesus healed was 40 years. And the, the, the um, rulers of the temple called the parents of the man and began to question the man. And the parents said unto the rulers of the temple, This guy is of age. Let him speak for himself. What they were telling the rulers of the temple was that he has gained age to be accountable for his soul. When you come into the stage of accountability, you can decide by an act of your own will that you do not sanction the dedication that took place on your behalf. And on the strength of your own will and your own convictions, you can break that link. And this is a situation where personal deliverance is possible. Is that clear? Secondly, a person's life of sin can be responsible for such complications. You know, while we were in the university, a lot of things took place. I was, I was a pastor. I was a, I was a pastor in the university. And my colleagues knew me. So when we finished school, some of my colleagues that were uh, very busy, that's the way I would put it, they were very busy while we were on campus. So now they were married. But they couldn't stay married because there, was, there were contention spirits where, and they knew it was spiritual. So they had to look for someone that understands their history that they could confide in. You will find out that most people came into spiritual complexities just because they could not live a holy life. Immorality was the open door that the devil used to contract this kind of illegal unions. Another bona fide approach towards deliverance is that God sends a law enforcement agent. And that happens when God imparts his authority of, over your life to represent him. There are two utensils that God gives a man to represent him. One is power. Power is boisterous, power is loud, power is noisy. But authority is judicial. It is by divine authority that we revenge disobediences, we re revenge illegalities, we revenge and we secure grounds that were considered to the enemy. So in my practice as a law enforcement agent, I have had to snatch so many people out of the hands of Satan. It's, it's my, part of my job. Hallelujah. So we are, you don't need to prophesy to me that my name is in Satan's watch list. If we prophesy that, in fact, you are, you are not in order. Because you don't, I don't need a prophecy to know that. Every bona fide law enforcement agent in the spirit is a headache to Satan. And Satan 
will mark them for destruction. But you see, Satan is not as strong as he claims. He can't say he will kill you tomorrow and get it done. Because it's not given to him. I would rather serve him that has all power and all glory and all majesty. So our life is in his hands. Not in Satan's hands. So Satan is not in control. And the, the safest place to be in a war situation, spiritual battle situation, is in the front lines. So I choose to be in the front lines. It's the safest place to be. You have access to the resources of God. You have access to reinforcement from heaven. You have access to, to intense care from God. Because your presence in the front lines keeps a lot of people under covering. These things are accomplished by the authority of the Spirit that is given unto men to represent God. And tonight, I will perform my duty as a law enforcement agent in the Spirit. Jesus raises men to represent him, to go for him. And he gives them power, and he gives them authority. Yes, Pastor Philip B., how many cases do we have here? So, let us know, because I want to take you... I had to do this to legitimize the fact, to legitimize this teaching, and to make you understand that there are people that are caught up in real-time bondage that the church, the body of Christ, is ignoring because of a scam, a scam doctrine. It's a scam. It's a faith preaching that is a scam. Makes people pretend as if their problems don't exist. And then they go home and cry. Because many preachers will deny that there is nothing like spirit power. Because it's a safer place to be. You can't call them now to come and deliver you if you have that condition. So he has used that situation to deliver himself from the responsibility of having to administer help. That's his scam. And the people were taught, brainwashed in church, to believe that it doesn't exist. So, in church it doesn't exist. Everybody is smiling. Then when they go home, Ogugu will bring out his kobuko and say, you talk too much today. So we are law enforcement agents. And we trust that God will help us this evening in the name of Jesus. So how many people do we have here? Alright, so in the next few moments we'll be hearing the voices of our brethren all across the world that are trying to participate in this meeting to tell us their experience. And I had to do this so that you will know that human beings are suffering under the hand of Satan. The job of a pastor is not the same with the job of a politician. A politician can come to a village and give them fake promises, but a pastor dwells with them. The politician will talk and go, but the pastor is so the pastor can't lie. Because the next, if you lie on Sunday or Monday, somebody will come and ask you a question. It's a job that is modeled with utmost integrity because we dwell among the people that we minister to. And that's why the only way out in pastoring is that God actually puts something supernatural on your life. Don't be fake. Stay until God gives you something supernatural. And meanwhile, okay, don't worry. So give us the first. Uh, all right, so. Um, my name is Chukuma Osaho from Lagos, Nigeria. Right. I've had this experience. My sisters have had this experience also. Um, so sometimes I would see the lady in the dream. Other times I would not see anybody. I would only just realize that I have um, uh, brought forth semen. And I would wake up and see that physical semen all over my body. Um, and I would know that that dream has occurred. Um, for my sister, she's not been able to keep any relationships. For me, um, so none of us yet is married. I do not know if that is the reason. Um, I'm currently in a relationship though. And um, uh, so I think that those are the symptoms for me. I just either see myself in the dream with a lady and I eventually see semen or sperm all over my body, or I may not see anything, or I may just see that I am 
in a motion that looks like sexual motion and nobody is there and at the end of the day I see semen all over everybody. So that has been my experience and it has been the same experience for my sister. For, for her, she has seen a man physically try to come and sleep with her while, she's in, while she was like in a cage. Um, my other younger sister has had that dream once. I tried my best to call all of them yesterday after Papa shared to ask them if they had had this experience and they all shared this experience. Thank you very much. Now, I've forgotten the name of the brother that just spoke. He's in Lagos. Are you, do you understand what we're doing? Good evening, everybody. My wait, name wait, is wait, Chukuma please, Osaho. Please. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Now, listen. Are you with me? Oh. Sometimes you drift. I say, are you in Burukum? Yeah. Hallelujah. You drift. I want to show you how people suffer. Pastoring is not about wearing a tie with a good hairdo and speaking London English. It's a game of power. Let philosophers go and look for jobs in the university. And let men that have power do pastoral work. Because spirits are on rampage. Now, can you, can you I don't know what, what the brother's name is, but this first Chukuma, now this first participant that just spoke, there is an altar in their family. There is an altar in their family. And um, what's his name? Chukuma. Please communicate with Chukuma. Let him know. Let us know if all those, if him and his sisters are all in Nigeria. And let them program, program them for for Match contact. Let them come here. Yeah. Next. Next. Next case. So, Apostle said that we should um, send this um, voice note. So, um, part of the symptoms that that I notice is each time I maybe like taking or, for example, now I went to do IVF when they found out. Okay. It was taking a while for me to get pregnant, so I went to do IVF. Every time they put, uh, they finish the procedure, a night before the day that I was to confirm it if I was pregnant or not, I always see a dream where somebody comes to sleep with me. And then the following morning, the pregnancy test is going to be negative, and that same following morning, blood will start flowing. And then apart from that one too, I also notice that each time I have an encounter, for example now, like um, it still happened yesterday, I had an encounter with um, Apostle Arome Osaipo. There was an obstruction as if uh, uh, maybe somebody or something did not want me to have that encounter, encounter. to get the deliverance and this is not the first time it has happened I think on three or four occasions where um, I would find myself in front of one of God's general and then something will happen and then they will not be able to pray for me so that one and then also it's from one ailment to another every time there's always an ailment one ailment to another and then there's a dream where where um, one was telling me that I should take this money and leave this man, uh, leave my husband alone. So that was what the person was telling me, like, take this money and leave this man. Just leave this man. So he keeps saying that one, and then I said I wasn't going to, and because I refused, he said, okay, since I have refused, that I will see, that he will show me. And it's been from one sickness to another sickness, like that, from one surgery to another surgery, and what else again? It's been serious, to be honest. It's Can been you see serious. the jealousy? There was one time too. Can you see the thing resisting I forgot to add conception? this one. There's also the issue of gang raping. Like when you have so many people gang raping one person, so there's also the issue of gang raping. And then, every time, every time, like every month, 
there's always someone coming to sleep with me and then now, following can, the can you see uh, these are human beings so whenever church becomes cosmetic that we just dress and just I put my bow tie and say I just flew in now from the other side it, it means we are lost Jesus gave us power for practical situations. Can you see the influence of that spirit in the life of that lady? Please, be contact that lady. Tell her this night. Her own deliverance is this night. Yeah. That she should say to you. Number three, we'll do this for a few minutes so that we, we, have, uh, we have three more minutes. Then we'll go into prayer. Yes, take the third one. Good evening, sir. Um, sending this voice note in response to the um, issue of spirit spouse. Um, from a very young age, I was molested. I was exposed to a lot of sexual vices from both maternal and paternal family members. And it was not just one or two or three. There were multiple people, including both female and male. And that actually exposed me to a lot of addiction. I struggled with masturbation. I struggled with pornography. And by then, I didn't really know at a young age whether I had a spirit spouse or not until yesterday Daddy um, talked about the topic and I had revelation on what this was because I know that most times in school, when I was in school, I would have these funny dreams that I molested in my dream. I wake up with the urge to indulge in the act of masturbation and pornography. But then I didn't believe it was something called spirit pass. I spoke to a pastor about it. They prayed with me. I had like accountability partners. When I fall back, they encouraged me like that. I was just managing it. But I knew deep down, whenever I had such dream, I can never stop. I was being compelled to indulge in that act. And um, it continued for over, this is like 23 years of my life now. And then I didn't, I find it difficult to really like, like guys, I thought maybe it was like a protective mechanism for me, so I felt like it wasn't something of a big deal. Not until now that, you know, marriage and all those stuff, I realized that it's actually an issue. And I realized truly it was like a spirit spouse because it kept being repeated for, before it was almost like um, I fell into this act like almost daily, then it reduced to weekly, then monthly, sometimes two months, three months. I'll go like I'll have go on spiritual exercises, then I'll be be so fire grounded after the whole thing. Then the whole urge come again so strong that I cannot resist, and I've been going through such cycle for a very long time. But yeah, this has been my experience with this spirit house, and most times there can be female. Sometimes I see male in the dream. Sometimes family members faces. Sometimes I can't even remember the dream. Most of the times I don't remember the dream, but I wake up with the urge to indulge in those acts. So I've been battling this. I really want to be delivered. I really want, even yesterday, that, 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 when Daddy finished praying, as I slept, I had a serious attack. Yeah. I can't remember the sort of the dream, but when I woke up, I knew that I would feel like I was paralyzed. The urge was there. I was struggling. The whole pictures of molestation my child started coming back. The different things were playing out. I was just there in bed. I was, I could not even pray. Okay. I couldn't do anything. I slept back. Let me talk to that sister. The Chinese attempted to come up with philosophies by which a man can conquer himself. And what they recommended was self-discipline and meditation. So periodically you retreat into a temple, you are taught the art of yoga, how to diffuse the tension that is in your soul, and that is actually covenanting with other spirits anyway. And then you now become disciplined, don't get angry, don't lose your temper, don't do that. It's, and the resources from whence they expect you to do this is what is called the latent power of the soul. And that's why you need to be a disciplined person in order to be able to preach to a Chinese man. He must see that you have character because they are taught to develop self-discipline. But you see, self-discipline is not a solution when a spirit is involved. Because the lady that is speaking here has tried everything within her capacity to stop the cycle. 
But you cannot use the resources of the flesh to combat against something that has its roots in the spirit. And I did this, and I didn't, you know, when I announced it here was when they heard and did the notes. They didn't do the notes. I didn't doctor these notes. So that you will see live, real-time experiences. And how we are becoming incapable as preachers of the gospel to really reach the nerve of the challenges of the people that we preach to. And this is the reason for which all pastors need to go back to God and cry to Him to release His power. You are fake if you don't have power. You are fake. Because Jesus said, These signs will follow them that believe in my name. As far as Jesus is concerned, life is supernatural. And if you don't have supernatural signs as evidences that you have met with Jesus, Jesus, the supernatural man, will make you a supernatural entity. If that is not the case, you are fake. I've seen people that have tried to discredit the supernatural that as, as if it's, when you mature, then you become powerless. Those are atonements for lack, for fatal lacks in the utensils of ministry. That situation is spiritual and it, it can only be solved spiritually. Tell that lady that she'll be delivered this night. What happened to her when she followed the, she exposed the thing for deliverance yesterday. So the thing came and attacked her yesterday night. Hmm? What that is called is intimidation because a spirit is this kind of spirit never wants to lose his host. Satan will never try to intimidate you if he has not lost ground. Intimidation is a proof that Satan has lost ground. And by the time we pray again, today, that lady will be delivered and she will be able to marry. These spirits are weak. You don't understand. Somebody called me from London yesterday and said, bring this, your message to London because people don't marry in London. If you give this call in London, one million people will we we respond. I say, what? Okay, the guys in Europe, they are, the Europe men are, are agreeing with you. So we, we have to take this axe to, to Europe and cut people off the, the, the scourge of illegal unions. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Final voice note, then we'll go into prayers. Prayers okay, tonight are prayers Mariam. of war. I'm from UK. Okay, my name is Mariam. I'm from UK. And uh, I've got those symptoms of... Uh, symptoms of um, Give us volume because this, them this having sex in intonation is... Almost every... Okay, my name is Mariam. Okay. I'm from UK. And uh, I've got those symptoms of, uh, symptoms of um, spouse spirits. One of them having sex in my dreams like almost every day. The, pa- the person in my, in my dreams comes with the form of my husband. And secondly, uh, uh, they keep coming, they keep telling me, speaking in my mind, telling me to take my things and move leave, out of my husband's house. They, keep, they, they make me hate him. They, and as I am as speaking now, I'm actually packed last night and moved out of my husband's she house. Actually I'm, moving, her. I'm living in someone else's house. Thank you. Now, please, can you tell her to go back home? Tell her right now. Go back. Go back. Let her move back right now. Are you, are you, are you, are you seeing what we're talking about here? Marine spirits are out to fight against the marriage institution. One of the signs of a genuine ministry is how it defends marriage. When you see people that are casual about marriage, say, oh my God, you know, we can. I'm Pastor James and this is my third wife. <laughs> when you find that, you run as fast as you can. You, you take off when you find them. It is these spirits that are trying so hard to redefine marriage as something that happens within, with, with Adam and Steve. So that means Collins Dictionary was wrong. Webster's Dictionary was wrong. Oxford Dictionary was wrong. We'll need a new dictionary to capture marriage in 2021. Darkness 
has befallen us. And the church is supposed to be the instrument of light. So the recovery must begin with us. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. So we are going to take that song two times. There is none like you. Can you rise on your feet? Oh, oh, the God. They are the ones of men. explain something quickly then we'll, we'll pray together. The devil knows I hope you know Adam was created a full grown adult not a baby. So even though he was an adult he was still a baby in the soul. It was still his time of innocence. He had not reached the time of accountability. It was in that window that Satan defeated him. Most of the challenges that people have are within the window of the time before they arrived at the point of accountability. And that's why you will need to accept your conviction. For the Bible says that the father's soul is mine, the soul of the son is mine, and it's only the soul that seen it that shall die. You have reached the time of accountability. You want to accept yourself tonight. It is your right. 
He is of age. The Bible says, let him speak for himself. Tonight you want to speak for yourself. That I will not serve you, Satan. My father may have dedicated me to you. My mother may have dedicated me to you. But I render null and void anything that was done on my behalf.
52 verse 3. If you have it, you can put it on the screen. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 3. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Ye have sold yourself free of charge. But ye shall be so redeemed without money. Now our prayer is by the blood of Jesus. That is the ticket by which we are redeemed. And on the strength of the power of the voice of the blood of Jesus, we demand the release. We demand the release. Can you demand the release on behalf of your family? Demand the release on the basis of your own life. You were sold for naught, but ye shall be bought without money. Simamon de Belemo. Aye, aye, 
authority as a law enforcement agent and make a decree right now. The yokes are already breaking. Already going off. Illegal unions are being dissolved right now. He says, Saviors will come from Zion. God will make law enforcement agents from Zion. They will resolve controversies, put an end to disputes, open the door to them in prison houses. Ah, we give you glory. Something is burning. I don't know if you are sensing. <laughs> wow! Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. We will, we will take off. We will not land. There's fire. If I say in the name of Jesus, give me a loud amen. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Listen to me, I see in the spirit. I see a barrier. And a little child was buried alive in a certain family that is represented either online or here. And that curse has been the reason that has held a certain family under bondage. But as I speak, I, I feel the touch of the angel. That means the person is here. Father, that one implicated by this revelation that is representing that family that is in bondage because of human sacrifice. I ask that you stretch forth your hand and search over this congregation. And from my left hand side to my right hand side to the outside of the hall, help me find this individual. Ushers, help me bring that individual. I see a vision. A vision. A vision. A vision. Someone is carrying a calabash. This calabash is filled with a substance. And through this substance, the destiny of someone here tonight is being monitored. Father, in the name of Jesus, that one whose life is being monitored by, by a facility, a monitoring instrument, a crystal ball, by monitoring demons and spirits that is on this premises. I ask that by fire, by fire, show me by fire, show me by fire, show me by fire. The person is outside. The person is outside. Ushers, help me. Help me. Hey, Kobame. You were sold for naught, and ye shall be bought without money. Selene Yakoma Igamena Combre Samena in the name of Jesus. You know what I see? I see someone's womb was tied. The fallopian tubes tied. No egg can come into the womb. The person I speak of, you will begin to feel a fire in your womb. A fire. It will be kindled inside. Shortly. 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 You will feel a fire. A fire inside. Kindled. Because those things used to block the womb are going to be burnt off. Oh, 
Kuna Sunday. And then Akura. The fire is burning already. It's burning. It's burning. Oh, just help me look around. Because the fire has started. A lady will be on will be restless on this ground. A lady must be restless from now to the count of seven. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Igamana Korea Mena Sikali. Those of you online, this is your time. You sent us voice notes, sent us feedback. I lose your womb. Lose your womb. Lose your womb. Let that fire destroy what was used to bind it. Those of you online, just put your hand on your head. Father, I stand in the office of the calling. As a law enforcement agent, as a representative of your name and your kingdom, and I command this foul spirit that has tied himself, tied himself to these ones that are online right now. Let that yoke be broken in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. In the name of Jesus. Right now, Lord, concerning the physical congregation, if there's any legal union still contending for the destinies of men and women, tonight I stand in the office of the call. I stand as a licensed law enforcement agent in the spirit and I demand that the yoke breaks. Let it break. 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 I'm seeing a coin. A golden coin. This is the price by which you were them that sold you. This was what they gave them because you were sold. Now I present the receipt of the blood of Jesus. The receipt that is evidence that you were bought with a price that Jesus paid on the cross. Every other payment that was made on your behalf seeking validity to have legal right over your soul is destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. It's destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. It's destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. Aiga Santeli Mokoria. I'm seeing a woman cooking with a pot. Ancient pot. Ancient pot. Whatever you were given to eat in the fellowship of the damned, whatever you were given to eat in the company of the wicked, whatever your spirit was invoked to partake of, I Mekoteli kompesilia, jeli kopesko tamakulia baratate, enso sele kubela kusa urato petamila. Let it break in the name of Jesus. Osha, 
you find them, you bring them. If you find them, you bring them. You were sold for naught, and ye shall be bought with that money. You were sold for naught. Ye shall be bought with that money. A fire is rising. It's rising from the middle bed. I see that fire burning. Nothing can restrain it. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can resist it. A fire burns.
Please, you can ferry them to the intensive care unit for proper attention. Ushers. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You can can be seated for a moment. In Jesus, I tell we pray. Anyone that is fully recovered, you can make him or her to go back to his or her seat. Amen. Please let's pass the offering basket around. Nothing shall escape this season. Nothing, nothing shall escape this season. 
the deliverance of God shall be complete in your life, your family, and all that pertains to you in this season. The great name of Jesus. Please listen to the following announcement. Tomorrow again by 4 p.m. we'll be back to this place. And um, while the offering basket is moving around, you can cast your offering. And if you wish to, to do a transfer, you can use the offering, the bank details on the screen. Our Father and the Lord had, I mean, yesterday we were informed concerning our progress so far in respect of the facility, maintenance and replacement that we talked about. Eight million naira for the generating set have been raised, and we are left with five million, and the account is still open for those that want to participate. The people that want to participate, both here and people following us online, please use the account number and do something very fast. Then finally, we have two of our brethren here in our midst that I wish to introduce to us the word of our Father and the Lord. They have good intention. They have good intention. I have my brother, Brother Emmanuel Isegwe Ona, and Sister Onahi Agnes Otto. Are they here in our midst? Please, you can come forward for proper identification. We also have our brother, Pastor King. Pastor King, are you here in the house? Pastor King and Sister Hope, are you here in the house? Pastor King, Adi, and Sister Hope, if you are here, please make appearance. The reason why we are presenting them to us Please, can you come up first? We have both the hard copies and the soft copy of them. And this exhibit, I am tendering them for you to identify them in view of a very... You see, this is a very good um, problem. You know, the two weddings are coming up on the same day in two separate locations to this side. This one is happening. Okay, you can go to the notice board and extract the details respecting the various venues of the events. But this is our brethren, and their wedding is coming up on the 27th of this month, 27th of March. We have been praying to have more of this kind of problem, and this is a sign that we are going to have more, more of this type of problem. The time is coming that we have five weddings, five weddings in one day, six weddings in one day, ten weddings in one day, and your own will be one of it. So please, I want us to rise up right now and pray for these our brothers and our sisters, that the hand of God, like you have been hearing, one of the cardinal outlet for the warfare of darkness, the fight of Satan is around marriage. And like I said, you don't know that there is a color of warfare that exists until you begin to pull the corridor of marriage. I want us to pray right now and ask that the hand of God will preserve them, the hand of God will protect them, the mercy of God will protect them, the favor of God will protect them, the protection of God, the provision of God, the deliverance of God, the signs and wonders of God if you are praying to yourself, will you answer that prayer that you are praying? If you are God, if you are the God that somebody else is praying that prayer to, or if it is your own wedding they ask you to pray about, I want you to pray and ask for the protection of God around them. The protection of God, the preservation of God, the favor of God, the fortunes of God, the supplies of God, the signs and wonders of God, I want you to open your mouth and prophesy the supplies, 
Let there be more than enough supplies. Let there be more than enough provisions. Let there be more than enough favor. Lord, we thank you for our brethren. We thank you for the battles that you won for them, the warfare that you obtained and overturned for them. Thank you for bringing them this far. We ask, preserve them, protect them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Please. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. Lord, according to your word in this season, we ask, O God, that the favors of heaven will attend, Lord Father, O God, to this, Lord Father, O God, intentions and union in the name of Jesus. Let there be no lack. In the name of Jesus, let every hindrance be removed. In the name of Jesus, if there be any antecedents in the realm of the Spirit that bring warfare, Lord Father, let it, O Lord, be taken out of their way. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please let's put hands together for them. Let's go back to your, their seat. And the most important question you should ask them in this season is, can I have your account number? Don't bother about asking, how is the wedding going? I think everything is okay. Just ask for the account number. And any other question that you need to ask will be properly handled. Amen. So please be a blessing to them in means, by means, by money, by prayers. Be a blessing to them by all means. Please, may we rise up now. Shut down. Thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.